Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. We're back today with another episode of the Transfer League. This time out we're taking over Newcastle. Should be quite an interesting one. This is the series where every single player on the Newcastle team will be put up for sale and sold, hopefully. And whichever team buys a player off of me, I then have to buy a player off of them. Basically, and we see what sort of decent team we can build towards the end. And towards the end of the season, we get certain points for doing certain things. So let's go straight into this and see how I can do with Newcastle. Okay, so this is how you score points. Your league position is your start number. You get a certain number of points. Minus three for winning a cup. Um, winning a cup. Two, minus two for getting to a cup final. Minus one for getting to a cup semi-final. And then if you win the European Cup, you get minus five. If you get to the final, you get minus two. If you have a player in your team become top league goal scorer, you get minus five. And then for every player in your team that you get above 15 goals, above 15 assists, or your goalkeeper gets above 15 clean sheets, you get an extra minus one. And this is golf rules, so you're trying to get the lowest number possible. Okay, we've got the first six sales coming for the squad, and it's Kieran Clark going to Borussia Mönchengladbach. We've got... Fabian Shah going to Atalanta. We've got Akraf Lazar going to Gaziantep. That's going to be an interesting one. Paul Dummett going to AS Monaco. Christian Atsu going to PSV. And Andy Carroll going to Lille. So it'll be interesting to see what, team, what players I can get from them. Let's have a little look. Okay, we've made the signings the six that we needed. We've got Mustafa Barak Bozan from Gaziantep. 55 rated, very, very cheap goalkeeper for me. I've gone big from Atalanta, gone for Josip Ilicic, 84 rated centre forward, think he'll do really well for us. Then we've gone for Mana Kizera, Kizera, I don't know how to say his name, 62 rated Cam from Mönchengladbach, very cheap again for me. Then we've gone for Bubakare Sumare from Lille, I know he's got good potential and I think he could fit into that midfield role for me, I think he'll do quite well. Ismail Saibari coming in from PSV, 62 rated Cam, I think he might be okay, but obviously not going to get much game time. And then Stahin, Strahinja Pavlovich from Monaco, again, just another you know, very cheap centre-back from Monaco, 64 rated. And straight on from them sales, we have four more sales, and it's Dwight Gale going to Royal Antwerp, Emil Kraft going to West Brom, Henri Saivet going to Gymnasia, and Federico Fernandez going to Real Sociedad. So let's get some players in. Okay, we've signed the four players that we needed. We've got Jonathan Bond coming in from West Brom. He used to be a Peterborough goalkeeper. He was on loan there. I remember seeing him in real life. He's a very good player. Uh, Junior Pierce from Royal Antwerp, 67 rated. Not too expensive for me. Then we've got Leonardo Morales. Literally cost me nothing at all. Basically about 100k for him. So very, very cheap. Not too bad rate in 61, not going to get much game time though. And then we went for Adnan Yanazai as a big player coming in from Real Sociedad. See if he can do well for us in the league. And then we've got four more sales going out, four relatively bigger ones. We've got Sean Longstaff going to Frankfurt. We've got Martin Dubravka, our goalkeeper, going to Southampton, so we desperately need a goalkeeper. We've got Jacob Murphy going to PSV again. And we've got Joel Linton going to Bayern Leverkusen. So it'll be interesting to see who we can get from those teams. Okay, then I've made the signings. We've got Danny De Costa in from Frankfurt. We've got Vincent Muller in from PSV. We've got Lucas Hurodeki going to be the goalkeeper to replace Dubravka coming in from Leverkusen. David Luiz coming in from Arsenal. And Jake Vokins in from Southampton. I only just realised that I didn't show you why I got David Luiz, so you're probably all confused there. Isaac Hayden sold to Arsenal for 12 million, so I've signed David Luiz in. Okay, good, cool. And so we're going into the first game of the season against Sheffield United. This should be an interesting one. This is a, a sort of team I'm hoping to be beating and hoping to be beat them quite comfortably, but we'll see how this team does. We get a 2-1 victory. It's a win. Not as comfortable as I was perhaps hoping, but a win is a win. It's a good start. Let's carry out on into the next game. Okay, so going straight into the second game of the episode now. We're going against Aston Villa. Let's see how we do against Aston Villa. Hopefully we can get uh, another victory. Would be nice. Uh, we don't, though. It's a 2-1 loss this time out, and that's not exactly what I wanted. 
but you know we'll carry on and into the next game we go before we do get to the next game though we've got two big sales we've got Alan Sant Maximan leaving the club to go to Villarreal for 39 million so lots of money but he's a big pair of shoes to fill from Villarreal let's have a look who we can get and also John Joe Shelby on his way to AC Milan be interesting to see who we get from there as well okay third game of the episode whilst we're waiting for the transfers to come in from the teams that I need and we're against Burnley let's see if we can knock these off and and get ourselves another win we get a draw, a draw is okay, a draw is okay, I prefer wins but I don't mind a little draw every now and then. Okay we've made the two signings and they are Hakan Kalanoglu coming in from AC Milan to replace Alessand Maximan in that role and then we signed Ramiro Funes Mori just as a backup for our central defence coming from Villarreal. Okay we've got three more sales, we've got Matt Ritchie on his way to Atalanta Javier Manquillo going to Crystal Palace and Jamal Lachelle's going to Sheffield United. So three teams to get some players from here. Okay, then we've got three more deals coming into the club. And we've got a big one. Sander Burge coming in from Sheffield United. It cost me a lot of money, this man, but I think he's going to be fantastic for me. Then we've gone for Berat Jim City from... Atalanta. I'm not sure if I've signed this man before. I probably have. If I have, I'm sorry. But I don't remember signing him, so I've signed him again, perhaps. And then finally, Stephen Henderson coming in from Crystal Palace. Just a very, very cheap goalkeeper. Not cost me hardly any money at all. Still got a little bit of money left to play with. Depends on if we get any more deals gone through. We'll see. But we're heading in towards the next game now. And the next game is against a big team in Spurs. Let's see how we do against Spurs with this new look team. Oh, we get a 2-1 loss. That's not the end of the world though. We've done quite well there against Spurs. Hopefully we can progress on with this team and improve our league position. Okay, deadline day almost over now. And we've got one big sale and it's Almiron. Miguel Almiron going to Everton. So it's time to sign somebody in from Everton to replace him. Okay, and there we have it. The final deal done for this deadline day is Gilfie Sigurdsson coming in from Everton. Just as a backup, really. Going to be coming off the bench for me. Hopefully doing quite well off the bench. We'll see how he does as we go towards the end of deadline day. That is deadline day over now. So currently sat 12. Four points from four games. It's not terrible, but hopefully we'll be we'll be winning some games during our simming stage of this as we go on towards the January transfer window let's see how we do okay then we're coming in towards the January window opening again and having a look at what we've been doing during the simming stage we've not done great but we've not done badly so I think probably lower half of the table but maybe the top half of the lower half of the table if you know what I mean like 11th 12th that sort of area somewhere around that I think oh wow 4 nil victory at Leeds there though could push us up let's see how we do against Tottenham lost 3 nil, of course but yeah anyway guys I'll come back to you when we are in January window and we'll see where we are Okay then, so we're in January transfer window and we're smack bang in the middle of the table. We are 10th. Better than where I expect us to be actually, which happens quite a lot in this. I always think we're going to be lower than we are, but we're actually done quite well here. So, so far doing very well. Let's see what sort of deals we do during January and I'll come to come back to you near the January window or unless, uh, un near the deadline day, sorry, or unless we have a deal, I'll come back to you for that. Okay, so we've got one deal gone through so far in the deadline, uh, in the deadline, in the window, and it's Carl Darlow going to Valencia, so let's see what sort of player we can sign from Valencia. Okay, and from Valencia we've signed Fran Beltran, he's a centre mid slash CDM slash cam, 76 rated, only 21 years of age, very, very good potential on this player. Hopefully going to come in and be very good for us. Okay, and that Darlow deal is the only thing that happens for us during the window. Darlow out, Beltran in. Now, let's go and see what happens for us at the end of the season. After a very good January of games, we are currently sat 7th in the table. We've pushed ourselves all the way up to 7th. 
whereabouts do you think we're going to finish at the end of the season? Are we going to be 7th? Are we going to drop off again? Or are we going to fight and try and get up towards those Champions League spots perhaps? I don't think so personally myself, but you never know. Also, let me know in the comments down below who you think is going to be our top goal scorer. Do you think Callum Wilson perhaps or... Ilicic, what do you think? Let me know. But for me now, we're just tr we're just going all the way through to the end of the season. Let's do this. Okay, so we're coming up towards the end of the season now. And as you see, Arsenal down there on the 16th is the last game of the season. But if you have a little look at the end of that week on the Saturday... You've got a cup game against Tottenham. That means we've made our way all the way to the final of, I believe, the FA Cup. Which is an absolutely fantastic feat for us. Let's see how we've done in the league as well. But that cup run could get us a few points knocked off. That was a fantastic run to end as well. 2-0 loss. A 2-0 victory over Arsenal. What I'm going to do is I'm going to skip through to the cup. And we're going to see the cup as a sim. And then we'll have a look at how we've done in every other competition. If we can beat Tottenham in this cup final, that would be incredible. Let's have a look how we do. Let's see the team as well. What are we saying? So Wilson, Ilicic, Kalinoglu, Yanazai Burge. Oh, one of our... Oh, Samare. Injured, obviously, in the central midfield role. Lewis up to a 77 now. That's lovely to see. But let's just quick sim against Tottenham and hope. And hope. Ah, the hope didn't work. Wilson. Wilson missed. Wilson got called offside or something. That's not good. And then Torre got a red card. And Vinicius Jr., the man to end our cup run. Not too bad, though. Getting to the final is a fantastic, fantastic result for us in the cup. Let's see how we've done in every other competition, shall we? So, in the league... Whoa! In the league, we finished fifth. What a performance that is from Newcastle. That is an absolutely incredible feat. Finishing fifth. That is just amazing. How did we do in every other cup? We obviously know we got to the final of one. Let's see what else has happened. So, the final of the FA Cup knocks minus two off for us for getting to the final didn't get to the final of the Carabao did we get to the semi? no we didn't but Fulham and Birmingham did interesting there's always seems to be some strange semi-finalists and obviously not in Europe so now it's about did we get top goal scorer? Callum Wilson got top goal scorer oh my goodness that's minus five that's minus five that is incredible Callum Wilson, obviously the man, carried this team. Right, let's have a look as well, because there's still more points could be coming off because of goals and assists and everything. Let's see. Ilicic with one goal from 25 games. That is so poor. Right, how many people scored above 15 goals? Just Wilson above 15, so that's minus one. Anybody above 15 assists? No, 11 for Chalanoglu not bad though. And then Hurideki only on 12 clean sheets so Newcastle start on five points minus two for the cups puts us on three minus one for the above 15 goals puts us on two and minus five for the top goal scorer puts us on minus three that is incredible they are right up there fighting for those Champions League and Europa League spots in our league so far very, very impressive there from Newcastle. Let's go on to the next episode, I suppose. I will see you there next time when I'll be doing this all again, but with Sheffield United, which could be a very difficult one, but we shall see how we do. I thought Newcastle were going to struggle. They didn't. They did very well. So maybe Sheffield United will be the same. Make sure you're here for that one, guys. And please leave a like if you enjoyed this and subscribe. And I will see you next time. Goodbye.